Hey guys, Ron here, and we finally hit episode number 10 of this series that kind of changed my channel, and even spawned other series like creating new Pokemon from fears and multiple other Pokemon art videos. To celebrate the 10th part, I thought it would be pretty magical to actually go to the zoo and find animals to inspire a few of my creations. More specifically, now that I made a video about the starters for my own fictional Pokemon region, check those out if you haven't, I now want to populate this Middle Eastern inspired region of mine with some Pokemon, so hopefully we find some animals that could fit in this climate. But I'm not going to be too strict. If you haven't seen the previous videos in this series, please make sure to, because I think the fantastic reception to those videos is the reason this channel is currently the way it is. You can't even imagine how thankful I am. It's all because of your feedback, so please make sure to like this video too if you want to see part 11. Now since the Bronx Zoo is normally packed and I don't want to be there during a pandemic, here we are at the smaller and more secluded Staten Island Zoo. I saw so many awesome animals here that I actually have enough footage for like two videos. Right at the entrance they gave us a good beginning for this video with a ground hornbill and ostrich. The hornbill is from southern Africa, but since my personal region has parts of northern Africa, the ostrich is a great example of a Pokemon that I want in my region. We could possibly incorporate a Pokemon related reason as to why it sticks its head in the ground, like real world ostriches do. This zebra is offering me a seat, while this tortoise does not want to be climbed on. They had a leopard there. I mean, we already have a leopard Pokemon, but still, this dude was sick. Definitely the closest I've ever been to a big cat. And many zoos let the peacocks roam free because they're harmless and won't leave the zoo grounds. It's incredibly cool to see an exotic animal walking around. Peacocks are male peafowls, and the females are peahens. I could make a peacock Pokemon that has a gender difference like Unpheasant, but I won't make one unless I had an amazing idea because its patterns will be super hard to masterfully translate into a Pokemon. We already made a goose Pokemon in the second uh, Creating New Pokemon series. God, that was a long time ago. A couple of pigs, although we already made a few pig Pokemon this year. This sheep is pretty chill, and oh my god, they have capybaras here. I've always wanted a capybara Pokemon, I, I love this animal, but it's from South America and I'm trying to find some animals that could be part of my Middle Eastern inspired Pokemon region. That's why I can't use all the cool animals from Australia like the kangaroo and emu. Ah, this emu is super chill. And it gave me an idea to make an ostrich Pokemon whose pre-evolved form is basically the size of an emu. Let's actually make an ostrich Pokemon family. Since ostriches don't fly, how about I make this Pokemon a ground type and have it camouflage into the terrain of savannas and deserts. The Prevo will look like baby ostriches who have these spots and patterns. Let's do this thing. First I'm going to start off by making a generic ostrich body so we can work off that. I don't want to make it too accurate to a real life ostrich so it fits the Pokemon style. It'll be wearing its feathers like a cloak and will strut around all confident like, but that will juxtapose its actual color scheme which will make it look all muddy. It's going to be smug, but real ostriches have really tiny heads that don't fit the Pokemon style so let's make its head bigger. Since its feathers camouflage with its habitat, the feathers on its neck, wings and tail are going to be plant like, green feathers that aren't actually plants. I'm adding patterns that look like dirt on both its uh, feathers and legs. Its feet are actually muddy though. It's a ground type that walks everywhere so it is what it is. Again its color scheme will help it blend into the surroundings so forgive me if they don't look too natural on an ostrich. But it is a Pokemon. We have purple rats. Originally I made its head blue so it blends into the sky but I didn't feel it. I'll change it later though to fit in better. Now it's time for the Prevo based on baby ostriches. Its beak was tough to shape but I think it's fine for now. It's not a timid or scared little chick, it's feisty. It'll look like a bush which helps it blend into its environment, but also mimics the feathers of real ostrich chicks. The bottom half of it will look like a cracked egg, almost like it's mid-hatch. But it also makes it look like a bowl of salad, since it is prey that is almost inviting its predator to take a bite. It likes a challenge. I'm trying to translate the spots that ostrich chicks have into patterns that make sense though. And there they are. Habitat from Habitat and Tot evolves into Strut Ridge from Strut, Ostrich, and Ridge, a narrow hilltop, which is what Strutridge's body is supposed to be disguised as. Habitat are born looking like the plants and terrain of their environment. This allows them to camouflage in their surroundings. However, Habitats are impatient and restless. They like to play and challenge other Pokemon to races, making them spotted by predators easily. Thankfully, Habitats are skilled at kicking sand directly at the eyes of their foes and hastily running away. Some say that these Pokemon invite predators to test their own skills, since Habitats are known to taunt their enemies as they run away. Their evolved form, Strut Ridge, pompously walks around its territory without a care in the world, seemingly confident in its cloaking abilities. In broad daylight, this Pokemon will stick its head in the ground to fully disguise itself. If it is somehow noticed or attacked, it will kick its enemy with enough force to project even a Hippowdon 50 feet away. Though it cannot fly, it can run and hop at incredible speeds and heights. Their wingspan is unexpectedly large, using them to intimidate their foes if all else fails. Here are their shinies. 
I love this color scheme. It's its signature move, Mud Kick, has 80 base power and a 30% chance of flinching the opponent. They have the ability Runaway or Unburden with the hidden ability Moxie. I was nervous when making this Pokemon that its colors would clash too much and that its concept wouldn't be executed well, but I think I pulled it off. I originally wanted the skin to be blue to mimic the sky, but remembered that I wanted it to stick its head in the ground like actual ostriches, so it would make sense to do so if it wanted to cover the part of its body that doesn't camouflage perfectly. I hope people understand that its feathers look like plants but aren't, that's the point, and even though it's a bird, it doesn't fly like Blaziken and Empoleon, so it's not a flying type. Regardless, this Pokemon will be a perfect fit for the arid deserts and plains of my Asone region. Look at all these barn animals. All fit in so well in a Middle Eastern region. One animal that will inspire a Pokemon in my region will be these goats, but that's for a video in which I make my legendary Pokemon. Ooh, this donkey is actually kinda cute. Okay, now I want an alpaca Pokemon so badly, especially since I think they look cuter than llamas, but alpacas are South American, so I'll save those for a video in which I'm not trying to make a Middle Eastern Pokemon. I know that there will be a porcupine Pokemon in my region, but I'm not gonna make that in this video. Bald Eagles! I love Braviary, so I don't think I can top that, but hey, little known fact, the famous eagle cry that many of us have heard is actually the voice of a hawk. This is what an actual eagle conversation sounds like. We have a shy turkey vulture here, not a bad inspiration, and wow this toucan came really close, but toucanin is already pretty clean. They have these giant snakes loose in the zoo, pretty dangerous if you ask me. Now these two are really cool because we literally have a Cantonian and a Lowland Vulpix in the same habitat, playing and having fun, this is actually really really cool and cute. These arctic foxes are just so cute when they sniff each other's butts, canines be canines am I right? Look at the contrast, you have an animal known for its beauty next to an animal known for the opposite, a skunk. The sloth was interesting, but honestly Slackoth is kinda perfect. I wouldn't change anything about it, and we already made an electric type regional form in my type swap series, so check that out if you haven't. Now here we have a clip springer that is native to Africa, so I could put it in my video and I- oop. These ring-tailed lemurs are actually being overprotective of this mother lemur who just gave birth. But let me focus on that clip springer though. From the beginning I knew that I wanted to make an Oryx Pokemon in my region, another type of antelope common in Africa and Arabia, so I'm gonna make its pre-evolution based on the clip springer, this cute dwarf antelope from Africa. They will both be electric and use their horns as lightning rods. Let's do this. First I'm sketching the proportions of a thick antelope and adding these lightning rod like horns. Its face will be slightly less long than an actual oryx face, so it will be more appealing. The zigzag patterns are super important for it uh, to be identified as an oryx and also an electric type, so it was very crucial that I found a perfect pattern. Oryx horns are segmented and this will make the horns look more like uh, coils I guess. They will be translucent and full of electricity. Electric accents are appropriate, as are hooves. Now I'm adding the final patterns that mimic the ones on a South African Oryx, but also look like the patterns an electric type Pokemon would have. But this is an Arabian Oryx, don't be fooled. Finalizing the colors and now it looks like a Pokemon I would love. Time for the cute pre-evolution. It's basically a tiny antelope. It'll have a cute head with cute horns, patterns that will become the ones on its evolved form, spiky fur like the ones on a clip springer, and patterns that look like spikes and the patterns that baby antelopes have. I'm finalizing the colors, but keep in mind that I made the proportions a little better in the final version. Meet Voltalope from Volt and Antelope, and even Elope, which can mean to run away, which evolves into Thundorix from Thunder and Oryx. Voltalope is a rare Pokemon to actually get a glimpse of since it runs away once spotted. It takes a calm and completely benevolent spirit to keep Voltalope from darting into the distance. Even if an enemy were to somehow catch up to it, its fur will instantly shock any predator that pounces onto Voltalope, allowing it to escape. When it evolves into Thunderix, it becomes way more defensive and offensive. In ancient times, these Pokemon were thought to be Thunder Gods. When spotted, they will command a bolt of lightning to strike the ground, burning up the landscape and creating a barrier between it and its opponent. If this does not deter the enemy, it will charge up its horns and deliver a devastating headbutt. If all else fails, it can instantly escape using its electrically powered legs. Voltalope's abilities are Runaway and Static, but Thunderix's are Lightning Rod and Galvanize, allowing it to turn any normal type move into an electric type one. It has the hidden ability Motor Drive. I hope I finally made a physical electric type incredibly usable by giving it Galvanize. These Pokemon live around a lot of ground types, but are faster than all of them so they aren't constantly hunted down. Voltalope is an early encounter, but with a 2% encounter rate. If you find one though, they will become one of your strongest allies upon evolution. 
These meerkats are very social and curious, constantly reacting to whatever is happening in other parts of the room. I could make a meerkat Pokemon, but it would be too similar to Watchog. These fennec foxes would be perfect for my region since they are found in the Middle East, but Fennekin is a pretty well made fennec Pokemon and I don't think I could top it. So we're gonna have to leave these fennecs alone. Because I can't make a cute fennec, I'm gonna just make a capybara Pokemon and nobody's gonna stop me. It won't be for my personal region since it will be a South American inspired Pokemon, so I'm gonna just make a Pikachu clone like the Dene and Togedemaru from a future South American region. I mean, it's basically just a Pokemon version of a capybara, with the patterns you'd assume a Pikachu clone would have, but that simplicity is actually what made this Pokemon tougher to create than any other Pokemon. I didn't have a lot to work with, so I needed to make sure everything was perfect. I couldn't decide whether or not to put patterns on the snout or how spiky it would be. I originally was going to make the head completely segmented from its body, but ultimately made them more connected. It was also tough making a serious Pokemon that was also cute. I wanted to convey its chillness, so I made it sit. But the hardest thing was making the obligatory electric pattern on its body. I spent 47 minutes on its lightning pattern. I didn't know if it should be on its neck, belly, butt, throat, or chest. Ultimately, it was when I made this part that I noticed it kind of looks like the pattern is a towel on its neck, which makes sense since it stays in the water all day, straight soaking. So it makes sense to have a pattern that looks like a towel. But it was tough. I ended up finalizing it off screen because I almost gave up. Here is Denki Bara from Denki, Electricity in Japanese, and Capybara. This electric water type is completely easygoing, mellow, and on the brink of lazy. It is perfectly fine with lounging in the water all day. If food lands in the water, it manipulates the current with electric shocks to let its food flow directly to its face. If a foe comes near Denkibara, it simply waits for its enemy to touch the water and instantly shocks them from long range. As one of the slowest electric type Pokemon, it prefers to stay around water, where it is at its most powerful. The only thing it gets emotional about is when its carefree lifestyle is threatened. It will make friends with any Pokemon or human that desires to relax in the water with it, but the moment its companions make too much noise or ruin the fun, it will shock its comrades until they calm down or leave the water. Its ability is Static or Volt Absorb, with a new hidden ability called Current, which boosts the power of Electric-type moves after a Water-type move was used on the opponent. While this Pokemon isn't the Electric Rodent or Pikachu clone of my region, it would definitely fit in as the Pikachu clone of a South American region. And there are more animals I saw at the zoo that will become Pokemon, but that'll be in creating new Pokemon 11. So if you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. Make sure to check out the previous art video and let me know which animal you'd like to see in my Middle Eastern inspired region. Consider becoming a patron or clicking the join button to get cool rewards like seeing videos days early and a huge discount on t-shirts I made for you guys and much more. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram where I will post the full art of these Pokemon and I'll see you guys very soon.